So I really like what Timex have been doing recently. They've been upgrading their watches. They've been paying attention to details. They've added sapphire crystals, which a lot of people are very happy about. However, they still have a ways to go in my opinion. They wanna compete with micro brands and other major brands. They still need to do some major upgrades to their watches that other brands have been doing for quite some time, especially when considering their price point. And here's a really good example. Crown is unscrewed. This does not hack. It is the eight series Miyota movement that does not hack. Now, you could see that second hand jumping around. That is a problem with the Miyota eight series movement that does not hack. Look at that. It's catching up as I actually uh, go back in time it moves the second hand and then it catches up to where it would be if I hadn't changed the time. It's pretty incredible. And you can see as I move forward, that's not a problem. But when I move backwards, it is. So I don't know why they actually use this movement when the difference in price between an 8 series that hacks and an 8 series that doesn't hack is literally dollars. Maybe just a dollar or two. It is not a lot of money difference from them, and they don't use it. This is the next step for them. They need to start focusing in on the movements that they're actually using. This is a big problem for this watch, especially because it is a $350 watch. It's limited edition, like I said, sold out already. It's titanium, it's 200 meters of water resistance. You're getting a sapphire crystal on the front and back. It's 41 millimeters, it wears really nice. They will be coming out with this watch, I guarantee you, in a standard edition form. Who knows if they will actually charge more money for that watch because this was very popular. So in addition to this Timex James brand collaboration, they also came out with some other watches in the Expedition North lineup of watches that they just recently announced and actually are selling on their website currently. There was a mechanical version in 38 millimeters and then a solar version in 41 and 36 millimeters. And of course, a quartz version that is in a 43 millimeter. I purchased the 38 millimeter mechanical version. And when I got it, I was very disappointed in the strap. I actually expressed that in my unboxing when I got the watch. At $229, I thought it was a good price. I didn't think it was a great price. And in hindsight, as I actually wore the watch, I became less and less sort of infatuated with the watch. And I realized that there are websites out there selling watches like the Hamilton Khaki, which are completely Swiss made for about $80 more uh, around $300, and you can get a Swiss-made Hamilton khaki with real history behind it. And kind of the thing, the allure of the field watch is the history. Now, $80 is a big difference, I agree. Uh, and there is obviously a difference in the way you're purchasing it because you're buying the Timex. It's $229 directly from Timex. Um, that watch is assembled in the Philippines. I believe it's using Chinese parts. Decent looking watch, it looks a lot like the Hamilton Khaki, but you have to really sit back and ask yourself this question. Do you want a Timex with a Seagull movement or do you want a Hamilton with a Swiss made movement? And is that $80 difference what's gonna keep you from that Hamilton? That Hamilton has a history as well, as I mentioned. The Timex is sort of a homage to the actual Hamilton that you would be purchasing. So there's a big, sort of splice a difference between the two watches. I think what Timex need to do is they need to upgrade the movements a little bit, maybe put a Miyota hand winding movement in that watch and also lower the price. I think that they're putting the sapphire crystals, they need to start focusing in on the movements that they're putting into these watches. That's the biggest problem that Timex face currently. If they are going to compete with major brands, if they're going to compete with other brands like micro brands, they need to not only focus on things like sapphire crystals, they need to start focusing in on the movements heavily, the straps, and offer something that blows away the competition, not just competes with the competition, blows away the competition for the price. Get a foothold in the market and start making really exciting watches, watches that people really can stand behind. They're almost there, but they aren't there yet. This is a really good step in the direction that they should be going in, and I hope they take that extra step in the near future. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Like I said, I really do like these watches. I bought two of them. I bought that James brand, I still have that. 
I actually sold the mechanical version because I wasn't too enamored by it. And I actually was able to get the James brand, which I was very excited about. I didn't know I was going to be able to get that. So uh, I wanted to keep that one uh, rather than the mechanical. So I sold the mechanical. But tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Did you buy one of these? Are you disappointed with it? Are you happy with it? Uh, are you experiencing the same issues that I am with your James brand, that 8 Series? I've seen this in other watches as well. That 8 Series does jump around if it's non-hackable. Uh, it's sort of a quirk of the movement. But tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. What do you think? Uh, I want to know. Uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel. I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Watch Chris Blog. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.